Hello, welcome to Saturday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, um, where before I try today's puzzle, which is going to be an Argyle Sudoku, uh, I just have a quick question for you. Um, tangentially related, um, there is an app coming out soon that Mark and I have uh, created with a software developer um, in which we, oh, it's a Sandwich Sudoku app. Um, and obviously Sandwich Sudoku has proved very, very popular on the channel, so we we took the initiative to actually create something and we created 40 puzzles by hand which are um, well we're very proud of them and as I say they're coming out in an app which we've spent a long time working on in terms of user friendliness um, 40 puzzles to start with of very varying difficulty with a sort of fully functioning hint system and there'll be a further 60 puzzles in the year following release so there'll be 100 puzzles in all um, and um, what I'm after is some market research. How much do you think this app should cost? It's going to be um, desktop and mobile um, friendly and um, available on all the major platforms. So yeah, I'm not going to give you any hints as to what we're thinking. We're just interested to know what you guys think that would, that would be worth. As I say, it's a, um, well, we think it really stands out from almost all the other Sudoku apps out there which are which feature obviously computer generated algorithm tested puzzles um, and handcrafted puzzles are very very few and far between and in sandwich Sudoku space none exist in, in the app world so yeah let us know um, we'd be interested um, to hear your thoughts now Argyle Sudoku uh, this appeared in the a um, couple of weeks ago in the World Sudoku Grand Prix round eight, um, which was, uh, which means it was China's turn to create the puzzles. And China, obviously, an absolute Sudoku powerhouse in terms of solving uh, with uh, incredible solvers like Tan Tan Dai, um, uh, regularly making appearance at the top of the rankings. Um, now, this puzzle um, has this one extra constraint, which is that on the marked diagonals, you cannot have a repeated digit. Um, now, the reason I wanted to try this puzzle is that, it, well, two reasons, I suppose. Firstly, it, rela it felt a bit similar to the odd angle Sudoku that I tried on the, on the channel from the US Puzzle Championship a couple of weeks ago. Um, but secondly, I wanted to talk a bit about when you approach, when you're presented with a new problem or a new variation, what should you be doing? You know, do you just work through the example um, and, you know, hope uh, and I don't do that what I always try and do is to spend a few minutes just pondering what I might expect to find uh, from the logic of this puzzle and you know what the weak points of the puzzle might be so if we go to our software here now you can if you want to play the puzzle first just click on the link under the video it'll take you here and you can have a go um, there were two things that occurred to me when I thought about this puzzle sort of, you know, just at high level, what would I expect to be the weak points in this puzzle? Um, the first is these very long diagonals. Now these are not quite leading diagonals, so they don't have nine cells, but they do have eight cells, and that is a pretty big restriction. So these four very long diagonals feel to me like they are likely to be very heavily constrained when we're working through the solve. And therefore, if we think about it further, these four cells here are incredibly constrained because not only are they affected by the rows and columns and the box, but also there are sort of eight digits on these diagonals. And in these four cells case, there are two eight cell diagonals also pointing at these cells. So these cells are seriously restricted and these cells are quite restricted. So these are the weak points. And so without knowing anything about this puzzle, when I get stuck, this is where I'm going to be looking. Without further ado, let's see how we, as quickly we get stuck. I can see this has got to be a two. Therefore, this is a two. Let's be a two in one of those two squares because of the two up here. This five, look at that. Look at the effect that has on this box. So it sees these these three cells in the column, but it sees those two cells on the diagonal line. 
Therefore, this square must be a 5. Place a 5 at the top there. 1s, this must be a 1. It's just normal Sudoku rules. Ah, this, this 8 does the same thing this 5 does down here. That forces an 8 into this square. There's an 8 in one of those two positions. Nines on this block, same sort of thing. So those squares are all checked by this 9 and this 9, but this square also sees this 9 on its diagonal. So actually, we get another digit in the grid. There must be a 9 in one of those two cells. Don't think we can resolve that yet. And there must be a 9 in one of these two cells. Um, and 5 here. So there's a 5 in one of those two positions. And I guess we'll pencil mark the 6 as well. 6 in one of those two squares. an awful lot of digits here that are very lonely digits, i.e. there's only one of them in the grid. I mean threes, fours, six. So it's quite a constrained puzzle. There must be, ah oh, no, there must be two in one of those two squares and this two sees that one. So this middle square is a two, often the most important square. Yeah, that gives us a two here and a nine here. That results this two down here, this must be a two. Do we I think we've got all the twos in the grid? I think so. Now this nine, can we do anything with that? Can't see it. Uh, and these two squares must be uh, what's that going to be? Three and six. So this three here means this is the three and this is the six. This 6 now sees that square, that's going to be a 6. Um, now, actually, this square, this square sees a 3, doesn't it, right up there? on the diagonal. So this is one of the weak squares I was expecting to find. But one, two, three, four. No, it can be a five. Ah, but it it can't be a six. Look, this square, this six sees this square. And it can't be a seven, eight, and it can't be a nine. So that square, believe it or not, is a naked single on five. And that sees this square. So this cannot be a five now, which means there's a five here. These two squares have to be 3 and 4, and there's a 4 there, so we get to place a 4 and a 3. We can complete this square now. 6, I think. Find it very, uh, I don't know if you guys have had a go at this puzzle first, but scanning is weird in this puzzle because you have to sort of, you scan, or I scan very naturally this way and this way. Oops. <laughs> and then I might have a look at the box as well, but spot scanning the diagonals is is very feels very strange. Now these two squares have to be three and eight, but look that three scanning the diagonal sees this square. So actually that's eight and three in that order. See it's not really helping. There's, I mean so so few given digits at the top and bottom of the grid, but. Um, now we need 4 and 7 into the two positions, so ah, this 4 sees that square. So actually we can resolve that 7 and 4 in that order. And now I, I bet you what we have to do is spot the diagonal that's most constrained. And the reason I suspect that's true is that there's so little information in the top and bottom of the grid. So what we're going to find is Let's just check the eight the, the eight cell diagonals. I think that's going to be where I'm going to look now. So let's look at this one. 
Um, we need one, four, five, six. So this square is a bit restricted. That can only be five or oops, let's do that notation. Five or six. This square sees a one and a six. So this square can only be four or five. Oh, sorry, actually, I was looking at the wrong square. This ah, this square is better actually. One six five. So this square I think can only be a can only be a four. And this square can only be a one or a six now because it, it can't be a five because of this. So this four, is this helpful? This this four sees this square, so the four must be in one of two positions. Still not brilliant, but it's it's better than we were doing. We pencil mark the nines, we haven't pencil marked sixes, but we can't pencil mark the six because the six could go in three positions. There's nothing on this diagonal about sixes. Um, this diagonal now then. So this, yeah, this diagonal looks better because twos are prevalent everywhere in the grid. So actually, the fact we've got one, three, four, five, six on the diagonal, twos in all over the place because we've done all the twos means I can only place seven, eight, and nine in these positions. So this one sees an eight and a nine. That square can only be a seven. That means we get to pencil mark sevens up here. Uh, this square must be an eight now. In fact, yeah, it's quite interesting, isn't it? Because of the, there's no two on this diagonal, I actually know the contents of this diagonal. It must it must be all the numbers from 1 to 9 except 2. So this square, C is a 9, must be an 8. Sort of 9's in one of these two squares now. This 8, 8. This must be an 8 because we've worked out that could only be a 5 or a 6. Um, 8, 8. 8 in one of those two positions. I don't know if I can resolve that immediately. Uh, six, I feel like I'm missing something here. What is it? Um, eight, eight. Ah, this eight here sees this eight. That gives us an eight there. So there's an eight in one of those two squares. There's an eight here. So, oh, oh dear, that's not what I wanted to do. This square must be an eight. That sees that eight. This square is an 8, therefore, this must be a 5. Have we done all the 8s now? Worth remembering, if we have. This 5 sees that square and resolves that to be a 6, and that, I remember, means that must be a 1. So now there's a 6 in one of these two squares. Now this square is one of the weak squares we identified, and indeed, look, it sees a 6 on this diagonal. So that must be a 6. Now must be a six on one of these two squares and that is they both do look possible. There must be a one and nine into those two positions because we still need a one in the column. Ah and that's interesting. Look this one here means there's a one in one of those two squares. So corresponding exactly to the positions of the ones in this box here. So we know in the final solution there will either be a 1 here and a 1 here, or a 1 here and a 1 here. In other words, in this box, the 1 will have to be in row 8, and the 1 there. So the 1 will have to be in one of those two squares. Now, unfortunately, I can't seem to resolve that immediately. So I've done this diagonal. I've done this diagonal. I've not looked very hard at this diagonal, I don't think. So 1, 3, 6, and 9... Now this, so this is a bit restricted. It sees a three and a nine, so I think this can only be a one or a six. 
oh, that square, look at that. That sees a 1, 3, and 6 in the column. So this square can only be a 9, I think. 9. That resolves the 9 and the 1. That means this isn't a 1. This must be the 1. Must be a 1 in one of those two squares. Must need, uh, what's it going to be? A 3 and a 5 into those two squares. So uh, maybe I could have got that before, but that's got to be a 5 and a 3 in that order. 5's into one of these two positions. So that suggests this is a 5. 5's into one of those two squares. And look, this 5 here does see that one. So that must be a 5 at the top. I think I presumably that must be a 5, which means I also get the 7. 7 in one of these two squares. I'm not sure whether I can eliminate more options there, but it does feel like we're sort of on the home straight now. still need to put a 3 into one of these two positions because of a column, and there's a 3 over here. Look. Ah, I think I might just change the color of that cell. No. 3, 9. This must be a 9. Let's check the diagonals. That looks okay. 2 and s Two, uh, 4 and 6 into these two squares. Rather annoyingly, they both look like, like that might work. 1, 3, 4 into these squares. Now this one must be restricted, surely. Yeah, that's a 1 or a 3. This one's a 1 or a 4. This one is a... Ah! 1, 3 or 4. Somehow that doesn't get eliminated on the diagonal. I'm sure. Ah, oh, this one sees a three. Is that the trick? Yes. So that one did see something useful. So that's a one and a four. That means this is a three. That means I get to place the one here. I move the one from here. This six now is forced up to the top. I should make that a four. This is a four. I think we're just finishing off now. 3 and 7 into these two squares must be this way around. That makes this a 7, this a 6, this a 6. Remove the 6 from here. It's quite an interesting puzzle. I, I certainly haven't felt I've done it with much alacrity. I'll be interested to hear from you guys whether you sort of sailed through it with no problems. Um, wouldn't surprise me because I'm, I'm certainly finding the scanning completely counterintuitive. So let's check. That's the right answer. Thanks very much for watching. Do give me feedback to that first question if you if you have a view. Be very interested to hear it, and we'll be back soon with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.